Trinity Sunday to you. I'm Mother Allison, and we're glad to have you worshiping with us today. If you haven't already, please download the bulletin at our website or in your email. At the end of the bulletin, you'll find information about all the ways we're staying connected during this time, including classes and prayer groups. You will also find information about our safe and secure giving portal. Please join me as we sing hymn 400, verses 1 through 4, found on the first page of your bulletin.
confession of a true faith, to, knowledge, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity, and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. A, re a reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God, ca God called the... <coughs> God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were un under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth, that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves, of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the skies, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth 
and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, and everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand and join with me in Canticle 13, found on page 5 of your bulletin.
commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. A woman I once worked for would ask for volunteers to lead a prayer at the beginning and the end of our meetings. Every time she asked, she made a point not to look at anyone in particular. It wasn't meant to be a high pressure situation, merely an offer. Some of my coworkers occasionally volunteered, others kept their heads bowed and their mouths shut every time. For me, the moments between her asking and someone beginning to pray were torturous. As soon as we sat down together, I would begin to feel anxious, and my heart would feel like it was trying to escape my chest. I felt a need a pull to speak up and pray for us, but I was trapped by a crippling fear of making a mistake. Although these were people I had known and worked with for a long time, some of them all my life, there was something about becoming vulnerable in the way that only prayer makes us that terrified me. Then one day, our leader asked, would anyone like to pray? And no one answered her. All those who felt most comfortable had already spoken up, and those who were not inclined had pretty much established that they never would be. The silence and the waiting were too much to bear. Right as I was attempting to calm my breathing so that I could shakily step forward, she spoke again. She said gently, if your heart is racing right now, that is the spirit calling you to this. I felt like the air had been pulled from my lungs. Was she right? Was she reading my mind in particular? Is this feeling that I'm calling anxiety some kind of divine inspiration? I don't think I believed her at first, but when I opened my mouth and said, the Lord be with you, the racing stopped. My voice still shook, I tripped over a syllable or two, but for the first time during those sessions, my heart was quiet and calm. I wasn't anxious. I no longer felt trapped. The call had been answered. My heart would continue to race every time anyone, anywhere, asked for a volunteer to pray, to lead worship, or to preach. I learned that the only way to slow my heart was to give in to the calling, to step up and to speak out. When I saw the gospel reading for today, my heart didn't race. In fact, I believe it may have stopped for a moment. How am I, a literature major, supposed to preach on so short a message? I need many more words. But since today is Trinity Sunday, I realized I really only needed three words to write my sermon. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. These three words sum up for us the role our triune God plays in our lives and in our history. We were created as stewards of all creation. We were redeemed along with all the world by the sacrifice made in Jesus. We are sustained by the spirit that pours love into our hearts. 
I can't think of any other aspect of our Christian faith that is both so simple and so incredibly complex. Christians have spent hundreds of years discussing the topic of the Trinity, debating it, studying it, dividing or uniting ourselves around it. What does one God in three persons even look like? How do the persons of the Trinity relate to one another, and what does that mean for us? The Holy Spirit, which both comes from God and is God, is what brings us to ask these questions. God, the Spirit, makes our hearts race when we are called to a new ministry or warned against straying from the path. She sustains us through life's challenges, whether they be personal or global, medical or social. The Holy Spirit that rested on the apostles at Pentecost and gifted them with the universal language of love is the same Holy Spirit that binds us to one another in Christ, inextricably linked to one another in a dim reflection of the brilliant unity of the Holy Trinity. Our Creator, our God who out of chaos and deep darkness created everything that is, did not cease to create when the work of the heavens and the earth were done. The creativity and infinite possibility of God is not relegated to a distant past or a seven-day story. The creativity of our God continues every moment in a world that is still growing and changing and evolving, and in our hearts as we grow and change and learn more deeply how to be God's chosen people. God's continued creation flows through us as we create music, poetry, art, as we discover the cosmos and the infinite possibilities of our own homes, as we tend to the earth and to one another. God the Creator works in us and through us as we raise up our children in the path of righteousness and truth, and works in our communities as we come together to protect the least and the lost in our midst. In this time of pandemic, divinely inspired creativity knows no limits as we find ways to worship together from afar, as we work to feed one another and protect one another, and find ways to show up for one another in times of joy and grief. Our creation continues. Our Redeemer, God who was born so that we might be reborn, who died so that we might live eternally, has promised to be with us always. God, our Redeemer, preaches to us just as he preached to the thousands who followed him up the mountain and across the desert. God, our Redeemer, teaches us the same lessons of love and service that he taught to his brothers and sisters, to strangers and friends, to tax collectors and soldiers. God, who redeems us, continues to perform miracles in our lives, just as he healed and fed our ancestors when they were sick and hungry and calling on his holy name. God, who redeems us, who was born of a human mother and given a human name, accomplished the redemption of the world on the cross, and continues to redeem us as we call on him for forgiveness, courage, and renewal. The redeeming work of God is our birthright and our Christian duty. The core of our call as disciples of Jesus as apostles and evangelists of the living God. In all our work, 
in moments when our hearts race and in moments when they break. We are sustained by God, our advocate, whose spirit enabled our flawed humanity to accomplish impossible things. God who creates us, God who redeems us, God who sustains us, one God whose three persons are tied together in a constant motion of mutuality is the divine community for which we all long in the depths of our souls. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, One God, a perfect unity of co-eternal love, a relationship of co-equality and unbreakable, unending community. That is what we honor today and profess week by week as we strive to live lives guided entirely by the same undivided and indivisible love. Listen to your heartbeat. You are being called. How will you answer?
Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others, especially Al, Amy, Angela, Ann, Annie, Beth, Ann, Barry, Bill, Braxton, Bud, Christy, Dan, Dave, Diana, EJ, Elizabeth, Jean, Helga, Hugh, Ira, Jen, Jerry, Joe, Joe, John, Joyce, Kaylee, Kathy, Ken, Lacey, Lee, Linda, Liz, London, Lynn, Monica, Nancy, Natalia, Natalie, Nina, Paul, Phil, Rob, Ronald, Sarah, Steve, Sue, Susie, Tim, Tracy, Trish, Ursula, Vicki, Walt, and Wynn. For the men and women of our armed forces, especially Alex, Bianca, Casey, Christian, Griffin, Pat, Seth, Steve. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. At this time, we will celebrate our birthdays and anniversaries that are coming up or have just passed this week. This week, we have celebrating birthdays Melinda Anderson, French Bowden, Ben Togel, and Nina Siegel. We also have, as Father Michael begins his week, his first week of sabbatical, he and Stephanie are celebrating their wedding anniversary. Let us pray for all these and all those we do not know who are celebrating during this time. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we, we celebrate, celebrate his death and resurrection as, as we, we await the day, day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
page 12 of your bulletin. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Although we cannot be present together as a body, we know that the Spirit's power makes us one body. For those of us safely able to receive, we are grateful for the spiritual food of the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. For those unable to receive the bread and wine, we are grateful for the spiritual union with you that this sacred mystery brings to life. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Join me as we sing hymn 362 on page 13 of your bulletin. Thanks be to God.